It is Bitcoin Wednesday. Bitcoin Wednesday, the digital currency revolution in the Netherlands. Register using the link on bitcoinwednesday.com. So it's a French company and uh, we are doing hardware wallets. Uh, so before I explain and demonstrate exactly what, uh, what we do, just explain why there is the need of uh, hardware wallets. Um, when you own Bitcoin, what you really own are private keys because it's made on cryptography. So in fact it's secrets for the one who don't know really how it works. You just have to protect a secret. And this secret, this private key, allow you to spend, to sign the transaction, to, to spend the Bitcoin. So it gives you the power to spend the Bitcoin. So um, this is something that you need to protect. In the, in the blockchain realm, the security is up to the user because everyone is, the, you are your own bank. So it means that you need to secure your Bitcoin, you need to secure your private keys. In a way, it's the beginning of digital identities. Uh, in the, in the bank, banking world, or in the world, you are known by your legal identity. On the blockchain, you are known by your uh, cryptographic identity, your digital identity, and you need to protect it for Bitcoin, but also for future blockchain application and technology. If one day you have uh, smart things, assets, like your car, or your apartment, or your land, uh, tied to your digital identity, well, you really need, really need to protect them. And computers are not good to protect information. If I have my private key on a mobile phone or on a computer, a Mac, a PC, it's a question of time before a malware or keylogger or anything will access to it in the memory of the computer and steal my Bitcoin or steal my properties. So it is extremely important for Bitcoin to go mainstream to have simple and powerful security systems that anyone can use. And this is what Ledger is doing. We are, our product is a hardware wallet. So it's, uh, it's in, a, in a box, and it is based on a smart card. So if you look at it, um, it looks like exactly what you have in your credit cards, because it's, it's a smart card, it's a small computer, it looks like a USB flash drive, but in fact it's a computer running code with an operating system, our own operating system, and not only this card will keep your private keys, or more specifically your, your seed, because it, it is based on the hierarchical deterministic wallet, which means that with that you can have uh, almost an infinity of, uh, of, um, of private keys. Not only it will secure it, keep it, but when you will want to make a transaction, it will sign the transaction inside the chip. Because if it was just a, a secure vault, if you put in your computer and you transfer your private key inside your computer, then it's game over. I mean, you come back to the same problem. So, when you need to make a payment, you just ask the chip to make the, the signature, and it will transfer back to the computer just the signed transaction, which is public data. So, you do not need to care about the security of your computer. You can use that at a friend, in a cyber cafe, in any kind of computer, even if it's completely compromised, your Bitcoin or private keys uh, do not risk uh, anything. So it's a product on which we are working for three years now. Uh, our team come from the smart card industry um, and we have developed this operating system which understand really Bitcoin. The, the, uh, the, this key, this uh, small computer is really understanding what is signing, so it is very important. Um, and it is built so on secure elements, it's like uh, a small microcomputer. The difference is that it is extremely resilient and resistant to all kinds of vector of attacks. Uh, if you lose that in the street, if someone wants to take it and extract, extract the secrets, extract the, the private keys, then they will need to have a 500,000 euro lab and spend one month or two months. So it is possible, but the cost is extremely uh, expensive and, and it will give you time. So it is very resistant to all kinds of physical attacks and also it will be resistant to all kinds of uh, logical attacks. So the, the best is I'm going to make a demonstration. 
So what you need is um, a Chrome application. So you, you need any kind of computer working with Chrome. So Mac, PC, Linux, or even Chrome OS. And you will install, it's in one click, a, a Chrome application. So it's not a website, it's a local application that you will download with, uh, with the Chrome App Store. So I'm going to try to put it. So it works on the USB. So you just put in the in the USB. It's going to ask you for, okay, this one is a new one, actually. So uh, the, well, it's in French, sorry. So it will ask you to create a new, a new wallet or to restore a wallet. Uh, but I'm going to show you how it works with um, a car which is already initialized. So I put it, it's going to ask me for my pin code. So the pin code is more like a protection if you lose in the street uh, or if someone take it, uh, the pin code will, uh, without the pin code, you cannot access your, your, your account. So unlocking the chip, it will uh, take the seed, it will make a derivation, get all your addresses, and it will build back your balance. So the blockchain is not on the computer, it's using APIs huh, to talk with the, the Bitcoin blockchain. And you see your balance, you, you can uh, receive, you can send Bitcoin. So it's like a normal wallet, right? The difference is when you are going to, uh, to send a Bitcoin, the transaction will be signed by the chip, inside the chip. And again, what it means is that your private keys, uh, your sensitive information is never exposed to the host computer. So I could really use any kind of computer and I do not care about the security. Of course, you also want to, to verify what the card is signing. Because if I have a very intelligent malware and it will, let's, let's take an example. I'm going just to send one Bitcoin to this address. And so this is this address, but if I have a malware, a man in the middle attack, maybe he could switch the address and ask the card to sign the transaction to another. So I need to have a second factor verification to be sure that uh, I'm signing what I want to sign. So it will prepare the transaction. Um, so we do not have a screen on the, on the hardware wallet, um, which uh, you have, there is another hardware wallet named Trezor, which has a screen. What we do, we have two solutions. First is, just using an external security card. So it's like a, it's like a card that you could find uh, give you in a bank, it's just like a, a matrix. And it will sample four elements of the address and ask you the question, the correspondence code. So uh, you are going to enter, you need to do that each time you want to make a payment. And of course you need to enter the correct information to get the, 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 the payment or if you, with this card, you are going to pair on a smartphone, it will push you and you will see on the screen of your uh, smartphone what you want to sign. It will ask you, do you want to sign this transaction to send one Bitcoin to, uh, to X or Y? And if you say yes, then it's going to send the transaction. Uh, so you have the second factor verification and then you, you can verify what you are signing, what you are sending. So even intelligent malware cannot just get hold of your uh, Bitcoin. Um, so, this was our business model, we are in fact selling the hardware wallets. The price is 35 euro, including tax, um, and we sell uh, with uh, our uh, our website, our e-commerce, and we also we also have uh, affiliate program. We also have resellers in uh, in many countries, in the USA, in Canada, uh, maybe here. Um, and um, right now we ship in the 60 countries. Um, if we look at our roadmap, I'm going fast because <laughs> only six minutes. Uh, if we look at <laughs> if we look at our roadmap, uh, the next iteration will be based on the NFC because right now it works only on computers having a USB port, right? But with that, uh, you will be able also to use your Android or iOS uh, device. So you will be able to use that also in uh, in mobility. And we are going to demonstrate, in fact, the next, next iteration of that at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in uh, one month. It will be uh, NFC, Bluetooth, it will have a screen, it will have a keyboard, and it will be a full-fledged uh, full hardware wallet with all possible connections. And we think that it will be commercially available uh, in, uh, in September. So we have offices in, uh, in Paris, we are a team of uh, 15, mostly engineers coming from the smart card industry, the cryptography and Bitcoin. And we, also, we, are, we have also opened um, 
uh, an office in San Francisco, uh, and um, uh, and uh, I have some wallets with me. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to uh, to buy, it's a good opportunity because I'm selling that at discounted discounted price, uh, 25 and 35 euro for the the version with uh, with two cards. And yes, if you what happened if you lose it? Uh, let's say that. Uh, uh, you lose that in the street. Do, have you lost lost all your bitcoins? No, uh, because at initialization you are going to make a backup of your seed. It's 24 words, and from these 24 words, which is in fact 256 bits of entropy of randomness, by mathematical equation, it's based on BIP39 and BIP32. You will be able, in fact, to all the time retrieve access to all your addresses. Uh, so that's why is that you never need to make another kind of backup. Once you have backed up your seed, uh, you can restore your Bitcoin in Trezor, another hardware wallet, in Electron, Multibit, Mycelium. Uh, you do not have to stay with Ledger Wallet. It's completely decentralized. We never have hold. We never see your seed. Uh, we never see your Bitcoin. So even if we go down and uh, the Ledger doesn't exist, you will still have access to your Bitcoin. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Somebody has a question for him? Yeah, thanks. It was an interesting presentation. Um, I'm wondering, and perhaps you, you, you told that, but you just told us very quickly, but could you actually move this from, um, let's say, from the device, from a small USB device, to a secure chip in a mobile phone or something? No, in fact, the, well, you can always send a transaction to uh, a secure chip inside a mobile phone. Which is, the name is uh, TE, it's uh, uh, Trusted Environment Execution. It's also, we have ported also our solution on TE with Trustonic and uh, um, Gemalto. And we we'll also make, make a demonstration of that in the Mobile World Congress. But it's still one year and one year and a half because it, before it will go to the general public. But yes, the next iteration will to have not any kind of hardware device, but to use virtual, secure virtual machine inside the smartphone. So it's much, it is much better than Touch ID because you know that if for iOS you can encrypt your key uh, with Touch ID, but the problem is when you decrypt it, it's in, in the memory, so you can get it hacked. So you really need to make the signature inside a secure environment, and this is exactly what our hardware wallets are doing. So yes, it will be possible in one year and a half. Uh, it will be uh, mainstream. Okay, thanks. I, I think I think that it will become really interesting. I think I think that's, uh, yeah, that's really uh, our interesting. our vision is to have hardware wallets as a commodity. It's not extremely expensive. It's like thirty-five euro, and it, the price will go down. And uh, we really want this to be uh, like free at the end because. Uh, blockchain technology consensus uh, distributed consensus technology can go only mainstream if we have security device for everyone. More questions? Yeah. When you logged in, you used the four digit uh, pin code. Yeah. Why can't I just brute force that? Ah, oh, you can. Uh, even if I give you this with my hundred bitcoin and the pin code. You can do nothing because you do not have the second factor security card or my phone. Uh, the PIN code, uh, it's only a security for uh, physical theft and I should have said that in the beginning, after three times it will wipe out the card. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Like a credit card. More questions? Thanks. Yes, so... Um, I've, I've heard you mention a proprietary or a, an operating system, and is that proprietary or...? Yes, uh, it is not open source. Everything is open source except the, the firmware. Why? Because uh, it is full of NDAs with the ST Microelectronic, all the secure chip makers. We do not have the right to expose their API, so we cannot make it open source. But we have a full specifications, which means that in the future, because it costs a lot of money, we will be able to certify our chip against our own certification, which means that we can prove that the chip is doing what it is supposed to do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. I think it's a really interesting product you have. I was wondering, um, 
Have you had any funding for this, or how did how did you set up your business? Uh, yeah, well, uh, this is the ledger is the reunion of three companies uh, which have been let's say funded. Uh, we also own the Maison de Bitcoin. It's a Bitcoin center in Paris. Uh, and uh, so basically, to come here, we have invested from our pocket something like one million euro, and we are closing right now um, a, 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 a another seed round, uh, more than one million euro. And uh, we will also need to raise much more money in the coming years. That's why we go to the USA because this is in the Silicon Valley that you can find money. So yeah, we are 15. It's uh, there is a lot of research and development. It costs a lot of money, so it, we need a lot of capital. But uh, uh, luckily, we have, we have found the capital so far, so <laughs> so far so good. Thank you. That was it? Yeah? No questions anymore? Thank you very much, Eric. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So. Thanks. Bitcoin Wednesday.